Welcome to the third edition of 55 New Things that Java 7 features you probably didn't hear about. In this edition, we'll deal with uh, eight new features that are graphical user interfaces that occurred in uh, JDK in Java 7. Some things that uh, possibly you did or did not hear about. The Nimbus look and feel. Now, Nimbus is a polished cross-platform look and feel that was introduced in the Java SE 6 Update 10 release as uh, designed to be a replacement for the uh, metal look and feel and is now part of the standard look and feels, which you can find in JavaFX um, swing.swing.plaf uh, for platform look and feel. The screen capture that you see here is uh, from the Swing Set 3, and it shows the Nimbus look and feel. Now, for compatibility purposes, the metal look and feel will still be the default look and feel. Nimbus, however, uses Java 2V vector graphics to draw the user interface rather than static bitmaps, so the UI can, ask, uh, can be crisply rendered on any resolution that you're dealing with. Now, Nimbus is highly customizable, and you can use the Nimbus look and feel as is, or you can skin it and customize it to the look of your own brand. Now, when it comes to setting the Nimbus look and feel, there are three ways to set the UI uh, to the Nimbus look and feel. First of all, you can do it through the code. The first line of this code retrieves a list of all installed look and feel uh, implementations for the platform, and then reiterates through the list to determine if Nimbus is available. And if so, then Nimbus is set to that particular look and feel. A little bit of caution here is that if, obviously if you were running a a version 6 implementation that did not have Nimbus look and feel installed and actually was installed in a different location, uh, you would probably want to um, use some exception code here if, if you did not find it. Now you can also set this on the command line by, by specifying the swing.default look and feel. And then finally, you can set it in the Swing Properties file by adding the following line that you see here to uh, Java Home Lib Swing.properties file. A little bit of caution there. If the Swing Properties file does not exist yet, you need to create it. JLayer component. The JLayer class is a really flexible and powerful decorator for Swing components. It enables you to draw on components and respond to component events without modifying the underlying component directly. Examples of this are the progress wheel that you see here on the left, or highlighting only the valid choices in a multi-choice component as you see here on the right. Now, if you take a look at the code down here, it's fairly simple to implement this. You just need to create a J layer, and then you're going to create some type of UI for that J layer on top of that. And then you're just going to add that to the frame. Mixing of AWT and swing components. Now there are two types in an explanation here. Let's go in and understand why AWT and swing didn't work. And that was because there were two type of graphical components in the Java programming language. That's heavyweight and lightweights. A heavyweight component is associated with its own native screen. And so examples of that would be all of the AWT components had their own native screen there. Now a lightweight component has no native screen of its own. And so the lightweight component relies on the screen resources from an ancestor in, in the container, um, in, in this containment hierarchy. Possibly an underlying frame object, it could be a variety of different things. Now components from the, from the swing packages, things like JButton and JLevel, those are all lightweight components. Now in the past, mixing heavyweight and lightweight components in the same graphical user interface caused, problem, caused problems when those components overlapped one another. For example, as you see here, the following screen captures show menu bars that contain both lightweight menu and heavyweight menu. And the frame contains a heavyweight button. Well, that heavyweight menu behaves as expected when selected, but the heavyweight menu is displayed on top of the button. But when the lightweight menu is displayed, the heavyweight button takes precedence where they overlap. That is no longer a case, and it works now. That's worked since 6 update 12 and 7 update 1. There are a few caveats, however. Non-opaque lightweight components that have translucent pixels, 0, less than alpha, less than 255, are not supported. If a partially translucent lightweight component overlaps a heavyweight component, the heavyweight component will not show through. Secondly, embedded heavyweight components must belong to the process that created the frame or the applet. 
The heavyweight component must have a valid peer within the main process of the, of the application or the applet. And then finally, advanced swing key events, such as those events maintained uh, in an input map, might not work correctly where lightweight and heavyweight components are being mixed. Then in that particular case, there are no known, there are no known workarounds. Translucent windows. As of the Java Platform Standard Edition 6 Update 10 release, you can add translucent and shape windows to your Swing applications. These function, this functionality, which is part of a public AWT package in the JDK 7 release, takes on three forms as follows. You can create a window with uniform translucency, where each pixel has the same translucency or alpha value. Screen capture here shows a window with a 45% translucency. Or you can create a peer-to-peer -peer translucency where each pixel has its own alpha value. And with this feature, you can, for example, create a window that fades away to nothing by defining a gradient in alpha values. The following screen capture shows a, shows a window with a gradient translucency from the top, fully translucent to the bottom where it's fully opaque. Finally, you can create a window with any shape object that you can define. So shaped windows can be opaque or they can be uniform or per pixel translucency. And the following screen capture shows an oval, shout, uh, oval shaped window with a 30% translucency. Now, not all platforms will support these capabilities. An unsupported operation exception is thrown when code attempts to invoke the set shape or set opacity uh, methods on a platform that does not support these capabilities. XRenderer based Java 2D for modern X11. Now, the new XRenderer based 2D rendering pipeline is supported for modern X11 based desktops, and this offers really an improved graphics performance. Uh, the pipeline is disabled by default, but enabled by sitting on the command line with the property dash D sun Java 2D XRenderer equals true. Now, you may find that some on older X11 configurations may not be able to support that XRenderer. And so there's this there's a verbose form it's called dash D sun Java 2D X render equals true can be used to enable the message uh, uh, to STD out indicating whether the pipeline was actually enabled. Open type compact font formats. Compact for, for, for Compact font format, also known as CSF font format, type 2 font format, or CFF type 2 font format, is a lossless compaction of type 1 formats using type 2 character strings. It's designed to use less storage space in type 1 fonts by using the operators with uh, multiple arguments, various predefined default values, more efficient allotment of encoding values, and shared subroutines within the font sets or a family of fonts. Now, the Java platform really has to be able to support these type of true type fonts for, um, and other font technologies as an, is in, in an implementation dependent form. So in Java 7, the JDK now, now enumerates and displays all the installed open type CSF fonts through messages such as uh, graphics environment get available font family names. And these fonts are also recognized by the font.createFont method. Better support for Linux fonts. For Solaris and Windows, the logical fonts for JDK are statically specified in the font config properties files. Now, on various implementations of Linux, there really was no assurance of the presence of particular fonts to support these particular locales. And this required that you would probably have to edit, um, those, uh, the, edit the fonts in, in the font config properties. Now, on Java 7, Linux and Solaris uses the system lib font config, reflecting what, uh, what the GNOME uh, and KDE desktop applications actually use. HSV, HSL, CMYK tabs, and the color chooser. These are new options that are coming in. Now, the default color chooser provides five chooser, panel, cho uh, cho chooser panels that you see up here. Swatches for choosing the color from a collection of swatches, which you actually see demonstrated here. 
HSV, which is Hue Saturation Value Representation. Now, prior to JDK7, this was called HSB for Huge Saturation Brightness. So a minor change that goes on there. HSL for choosing color from the Hue Saturation Lightness Color Representation. This is new in JDK7. RGB for choosing a color from the red, green, blue color model. And then finally, CMYK which is uh, the color using the process color for a four-color model. And this is new in JDK7. If you're looking for more information on the GUI changes that occurred in Java 7, I've got a few tutorials that are listed here. The Nimbus Look and Feel tutorial, the How to Decorate Components with the JLayer class, Mixing Heavyweight and Lightweight Components, How to Create Translucent and Shaped Windows, and How to Use a Color Chooser. Well, thanks for listening and watching uh, this particular screencast. We'll do another one of these where we'll cover some information about uh, the changes that were related to the virtual machine and some other miscellaneous changes that were in, JDK, in Java 7.